So we're back on Tatler Place, guys. Uh, we had a fantastic response from the first video we did, and we're obviously going to get across all five of the different animals that we do raise here on Tatler Place. But probably the one we're, we're best known for, and the one we've, we've definitely scaled the best, is our beautiful Marema Free Range Duck. Our duck is a peak in Aylesbury duck. Um, it works beautifully in this climate. We are zone seven out here, so the birds really appreciate winter. They don't like the really hot days, so everything works really, really well in our place. We've obviously got huge amounts of pasture for them to roam around on and to eat. So we just got back from the abattoir, early start for me, but dropped all the animals off. But probably the most pleasurable part of the day is picking up our beautiful two week old Peking Aylesbury babies and allowing them on the pasture for the first time. So these birds have never seen grass. So straight out of their crate, uh, we've got our, their beautiful dunk tank there. We can see they're learning what that's about. They can get their heads in, they can bathe properly, which is how all waterfowl should be raised. So two weeks old, all the way through to seven weeks old here. This is a 10 acre cell. They can go wherever they want. There's no nets, no, no constraints. And if you just pan over there, that's the reason this whole thing succeeds. Those beautiful Marema dogs. So we've got uh, No Name over there with Ginny, and then there's a puppy up in the, in the background there as well. So this is how it all starts. So you can see here guys, this might look a bit, little bit muddy and messy, but this is exactly what I'm looking for. So this Mate, you can see all their beaks going crazy. What is it? Well, they've, they've actually just got out the crate. They've probably only been here 10 minutes, but you can see them pecking at the grass and grabbing the flies and grabbing bugs and worms and God, tree sap. They'll have a chew on your boot if you stand still long enough. This is not an animal that should be kept in captivity in confinement in any factory farming. They do very well outside and they're fantastic for the ecosystem as well. So keeping waterfowl, specifically this peak in Aylesbury duck, just does so well outside. It's, it's pretty inhumane to have them in sheds. very lucky batch of ducks here as you can see they're on the dam at the moment we try and give them all the crack at the dam but this is a week older than the babies that we just showed you so they're still kind of fluffy and cute but they've got a lot of feathers on them now at this age essentially bomb proof um, no sort of snow wind or anything that nature can throw at them is really going to kill them at this point they are a very hardy bird and these guys believe it or not eat about a third less when they're on the dam than the, the birds in the paddock. They're, they're catching a lot of their own feed in here, a lot of bugs and stuff that they're picking up. Yeah, so feed cost down, feed input down, and uh, the size of the birds goes up. So it's pretty amazing results we're seeing. Funny that, giving duck the access to water that <laughs> get good results. <laughs> This is another thing we've developed at Tatra Place Free Range. Um, I noticed very quickly that confinement ducks in Australia only get access to drinking nipples, um, which only really delivers one or two drops of water. And uh, I'd already read that it's very important for waterfowl to have access to water to bathe, especially to clear their nostrils out. So I've developed this dunk tank, and it's, you can hear it running now. It's a very simple, it's actually a sheep feeder. I just cut smaller holes out of it. It's got a float system in it and it's just flush with beautiful fresh Wombie and Kabak cool water. The birds can come in, stick their whole head in, have a bath, have a shower, clean their nostrils out, which is the most important thing. And I actually put this down to a lot of the success we've had actually having a bird out on pasture um, as opposed to a factory farm model with a drinking nipple. So I am really proud of this, as simple as it is. Uh, no one else seems to be using it. 
the RSPCA was really happy with this when they came through the place. Um, it's something they're trying to push on to other producers, but um, yeah, so we call these our dunk tank. Do you ever clean your beak in here? Nah, I'd be doing well to, my beak might even touch the bottom of that, what do you reckon? <laughs> So uh, when I started pasturing the ducks and we started to scale it, uh, it was pretty evident pretty quickly that I needed a better feeding system. The, the little commercial feeders that you get for your chickens at home in the backyard wasn't really cutting it. Um, and I saw that the grain feeders were $1,200, $1,400 each. So I developed these feeders. Um, the most important thing about this design is the 90 degree bend here in the side of the box means that the duck has to put their head in the bin to actually eat the feed and it's really reduced our wastage. This feed's really, really expensive um, with the no, no GMO grain and the stuff that we do use. So you don't want to be wasting any. So this is another thing we came up with here. Um, a con an ongoing theme of this place, and I hope you pick up on this, is we didn't start with millions of dollars. Mm. My working capital here was $10,000. I can build one of these bins for 150 bucks, and they've been phenomenal. We pick them up, we throw them around with the skid steer. They're really strong, they're really robust, and they work beautifully. So these are our feeder bins. So this is our, our feed mix. So as well as all the bugs and the grubs and the pasture and stuff the ducks are eating, they've got access to this pellet. So this is a Vela product. Um, when I spoke to the rep there at Vela and I told him I wanted a completely unmedicated mix, he was quite surprised, unfortunately. He was even more shocked when I told him I wanted um, non-GMO grain. So we're trying to give our animals the highest quality inputs that we can physically afford. And this feed blend has been phenomenal. So growing out beautiful ducks, chemically free, working, working really well. They're, they're ready to get some. <laughs> so we skipped a week here, but these are five weeks old. So you can see now they're fully in feather. Um, they've really started to develop that breast meat and the leg meat that of course our beautiful duck is famous for. Um, they're actually, this is kind of the, after the really awkward stage, they get quite ugly in that fourth week. So this is where they start, they've, they've got their beautiful white plumage and their beaks are really starting to change colour. You can see we're getting a, a nice vibrant orange beak there and beautiful strong orange legs. That really is a contrast to the factory farm birds that essentially their beaks, their legs and their plumage are all pretty well the same colour. They're not getting the vitamins from the sun, the vitamin Ds, vitamin As, vitamin Ks that our birds are privileged to receive as you can see they're outside all the time. So it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good week good week for them and you can really see them turn into a, the beautiful bird that they're going to be. So this is the final stage. These guys are in their last week. So they're six weeks old. They're fantastic. You'll notice the pastured model. Their beaks are bright and orange. Their legs are thick and orange. They're very, very healthy birds. Their plumage is very colourful, crystal white. And these guys are enjoying the shade down here at the moment. But look, there is a massive difference, not just in the ethical component of raising a duck this way, and obviously the environmental advantages of raising it this way. There's a massive difference in the flavor profile. And all of our chefs would attest to that. We get a lot more fat and it's a lot higher quality fat. And because of that, the, the flavor is the flavor profile is very, very different and very desirable. And uh, I eat a fair bit of duck and I obviously enjoy it. But we've had incredible feedback from chefs. We've been nominated for a few delicious awards. We won this one one this year. So it's great to get some recognition back and have the industry really um, appreciate that there is a massive difference between the factory farm model and the, and the pastured model. The final step is the processing of the birds. This is a brand new facility and it uses a triple waxing system which is unique to this facility. I like to be there the entire time from when the birds are hung all the way through the invisceration to grading, weighing and bagging. So I hope you guys enjoyed having a look at the beautiful Maremma free range pasture duck. Um, the duck is available through Game Farm Australia, who we have an amazing relationship with. They're another a family owned business that actually are producers. They produce a lot of quail and stuff themselves and they understand the producer and the challenges that we have. And they have helped us oh, unbelievably 
process as far as getting this duck to market and solving, putting out a lot of fires for me along the way. I'll admit that. Um, you can also get the duck through us. So keep an eye on our Facebook and our Instagram. Um, we're always giving you guys opportunities. There's opportunities coming up in the future for, you know, home delivery potentially and all sorts of places where you can come and get that duck. So keep an eye on, on our social media. Um, we're going to get people to like and subscribe. And yeah, definitely. Please like this. Get, if you haven't, there's plenty of videos on the Facebook. Production value a lot less than this because I do them, but <laughs> probably more laughs. Um, so, yeah, get on the Facebook and get on the Instagram and support us. Um, the restaurant, the list of restaurants now, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of without bragging too much, but Key and Peter Gilmore has been enormous for this product, to be honest. Um, probably the driving force to be perfectly honest as well as our beautiful the support from our own beautiful customers but Peter Gilmore, uh, Key, Matt Moran at uh, Barangaroo, um, pretty much all the restaurants in the Star have been with us for a really long time, Lumi, I mean the list goes on and on. We're at about 30 restaurants at the moment so hey if, if you see us on the on the menu somewhere make sure you order that because this is where your money's coming and we're reinvesting back into this re re regenerative system. Uh, this is not some overseas conglomerate with money disappearing overseas. Uh, we'd love to have your support, and by supporting those restaurants, you're supporting us.